Hongbo. I am from HST Semiconductor, uh, which is a uh, Qualcomm joint venture uh, in China for ARM server. And I am also work with Leonardo Data Center and Cloud Group. Uh, in this session, I will introduce uh, the SBSA reference QMU uh, platform, uh, including the, uh, the, pr the purpose uh, features and uh, the firmware reporting work we have done and uh, the current status about this. Now, the purpose. Um, some, Le some Linaro member needs uh, such a QMU platform. We need it like a real um, um, 64 uh, server hardware, as feasible as uh, the real hardware. And uh, this can be a, 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 a test bed for firmware protocol development. Uh, and some, 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 some other believe uh, also need we, we can install and run uh, uh, OS uh, OS release as e as easy as as they can. Uh, some also hope uh, the command line to run it uh, sh uh, sh it should be as short as uh, as as we can. Uh, when you when you see the word the, the, the term SBSA, uh, somebody may believe we we are going to develop a uh, virtual machine which can compatible fully compatible with SBSA spec, but uh, now currently it's now uh, because uh, one reason is. It's uh, too difficult, and another reason is um, it's not necessary to do this. But I hope, I hope we can uh, pass uh, some level of the SBSA's back uh, tests. Uh, there, there's already. Uh, a virtual machine called Word uh, in the Camu, uh, Camu's uh, uh, called tree. Uh, but why, why, why not we use it? We, we use this Word machine. Uh, this machine is a uh, parallel virtualized. Uh, it's uh, with many uh, Word I/O devices, and um, not like a uh, ARM um, for hardware. The SATA and the USB controller isn't a memory map. In that system, the SATA and the USB controller is attached to the PCIe uh, bus as a virtual uh, water I/O devices. Uh, and this virtual machine is typically suitable for running workload because it uses uh, water I/O devices for acceleration. And uh, why not uh, use, command, uh, use command parameter or read config to, uh, to adapt this water machine to SBSA machine? Uh, the reason is I think the read config is suitable for adapt one base water machine slightly to another, not suitable for a com completely uh, adapt one to another totally different, different one. So can I just comment on the second point? Um, it's not the case that uh, these HHR, ECHR devices should be memory mapped. It's just kind of to spend the space of what uh, we have to implement. For instance, in the IoT spec, we can have uh, named components rather than PCI components. So there are different pieces that work a bit differently when you're using a PCI device or uh, a memory mapped device. So it's not a hard requirement that all these devices are memory mapped. It's simply to have some variation uh, in the system that allows us to ensure that we have more coverage in uh, testing the firmware that we run on it. 
Uh, yes. Um, uh, uh, actually, when I joined this project, uh, the idea is already was already in shape, and Ad did a very good initial uh, development for this. And uh, read also in this room, he did the firmware uh, firmware porting. Now the features. Um, <coughs> First of all, it's based on the virtual machine, and uh, EL2 and EL3 is, are enabled by default uh, because we are using this for, uh, for, for firmware prototype development. Um, a new memory map created. Um, uh, main memory is beyond 4G. Uh, this is designed by ART also. Uh, we added a memory map to SATA and USB controller, as I mentioned. Uh, USB mouse and the keyboard uh, is ad are added by default uh, to the USB bus, of course. Uh, E1000E uh, network, Network interface card uh, is, uh, is, is attached to the PCIe bus by default. Uh, VGA card uh, on PCIe bus by default. And uh, 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 interrupt controller version 3 uh, is enabled um, because uh, this is recommended by the SBISA uh, specification. <laughs> so, um, we remove all the water I.O. devices because on the real hardware there is uh, no water I.O. devices at all. And there is no uh, so-called platform, platform bus device uh, in this uh, Cremio platform. Uh, we remove uh, the firmware config device, which is a virtual device. Uh, on Cameo, there is a such a device, and uh, the Cameo guest can find ACPI tables through this device. So, uh, this de when this, this device is removed, uh, the Cameo uh, doesn't supply AC, ACPI table any longer. Then we have to offer the ACPI table uh, by the UEFI firmware. This is a main change. Uh, for the same reason, the SM BIOS is removed from Cameo because, it, because uh, this uh, also needs the firmware config device to pass by to the Cameo guest. And uh, the last one is uh, Cameo should uh, supply some DT nodes because at least the CPU number and uh, uh, memory size is dyna dynamic according to the Cameo parameters. So the guest needs, needs to know the information. So at least some devices, uh, some, some de uh, device tree nodes are need, needed at least. Uh, firmware porting. For ARM trusted firmware, um, we created a new platform for, 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 for this criminal platform. Uh, this is done by Radio Slow, and I, I have finished uh, Geek V3 support. Uh, this work has been uh, done by me and uh, already merged in, into his, his uh, tree to be upstream. Uh, another work is um, we introduced a secure flash uh, then we can comp uh, compile trust, um, trusted firmware to this uh, flash image. image. Uh, 
this is a work together with, with, with UEFI because UEFI is compiled to flash, uh, to flash image one. And uh, ARM transferware is placed in uh, flash zero. Uh, UEFI port uh, We also created uh, a new uh, platform uh, for, for this Chromium platform. Uh, we added support the newly the uh, newly introduced devices such as um, SATA controllers. Uh, another work is uh, because we introduced the new memory map, so uh, there is some work in the UEFI to be done to uh, adapt to the newly introduced mem memory layout. And uh, as I mentioned. Um, we have a flash zero for ARM um, trusted firmware. We have a flash one for EFI. Uh, so the last one uh, is uh, going to be done because we removed the, the firmware config devices uh, and this work isn't done now. Uh, this is a command to uh, just uh, assemble current command. Um, if you want to, if you want to install OS release, you just need to run a uh, Cameo uh, machine name and uh, flash flash zero flash one uh, HDA uh, hard disk image. If you want to install, you need a CD-ROM image. Uh, and after the installation, you remove this command, uh, this option. Only use a uh, hard disk to run. But before this, uh, this is a what machine uh, command line. You can see it's so long. We need to type uh, CPU and uh, we, we use semi-hosting uh, option for, for BIOS, uh, water I.O. device, uh, and uh, uh, net, uh, net, net, net internet card, and uh, CD-ROM uh, is optional. If you, if you install, you, you use this. If you run, you don't need this. So uh, the command line is uh, short. Um, current status. Uh, I have uh, sent a V2 patch to the upstream mailing list. Uh, there were a lot of uh, discussions, so I uh, mainly discussed uh, the purpose why, why we introduce uh, this platform, why not use the word. Uh, the word one. And uh, about the name, I uh, was also discussed a lot. Um, somebody think uh, it's not a real, a real uh, SBSA water machine because this is only an instance of that. Uh, but we, we still like uh, the term SBSA in the in the name, and uh, another one suggests we call it SBSA reference. I think it's too long, so uh, probably we we name it SBSA uh, minus ref. Uh, maybe this is the final name, but uh, it's up to uh, all the uh, maintainers and others discuss on the mailing list. And um, this can be done uh, inside the legacy, uh, the previous root.c file, and also be a separate file. So uh, finally, we, dis uh, we decided this uh, to be a separated C file. Uh, we agreed uh, ACPI tables not, not supported 
uh, supplied from Cameo uh, and the firmware should supply it just like what we do for the real hardware. And the device tree uh, is to be uh, confirmed because we need to know uh, how many device tree nodes uh, is needed. Uh, all the device tree ne uh, needed are some minor part of, a, of it. Uh, patch version three uh, also uh, sub submit to, to to the mailing list. Uh, I have seen uh, Peter left some comments, uh, but I didn't have time to reply. Uh, you can also find my code at the linaro.org. So uh, there are other issues while I'm working for this project. Uh, one issue is uh, when booting uh, multi car by PICI, so we need uh, to pass the PSCI conduit to 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 the kernel. So how how um, how to pass it is a problem uh, currently in 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 this platform. Because only only the ARM trust firmware knows it. Uh, this con this conduit should be either uh, SMC or HVC. Only only the ARM trust firmware need, uh, knows it, and there there should be a way from ARM, ARM trust firmware to U, uh, to UEFI, and then UEFI pass pass it to kernel. So that kernel knows uh, how to boot uh, SMP. Uh, there, there is some work uh, for this to be done. And another issue is MPIDR register isn't uh, emulated very well um, because uh, this also uh, due to booting SMP. Uh, the PSCI code needs to check the MPIDR to decide uh, which car exactly to be booted, but currently in Cumio, this, uh, this register isn't emulated very, very well. So uh, this needs, needs to be fixed uh, either by me later, if I have time, or either by others, if uh, you are interested in it. And uh, also, we, I have found two commits uh, which blocked me to boot the system. So, uh, there are, there are list here. Uh, I'm not saying there are a problem with this, uh, with this uh, commits, uh, but uh, uh, also probably maybe we uh, we, we need to do some firmware adapt for this new uh, commits. Mm, currently, I, I didn't check into details, uh, but uh, gate uh, bisect shows me they black me to to uh, boot. So so I just simply uh, reward them. Uh, that's all for me, and uh, uh, is Peter here? Oh, I see you, uh, sorry, nice to meet you. Install OS using uh, ISO image or something like uh, that. Sorry, that's it. How can you install uh, OS? Yes, I, I have test uh, Debian release for okay. ARM. It's uh, official Debian release for ARM. I have test. Okay. So, what is your plan to add in the ACPI table? Yeah, so what we're doing for HPI and also for SMBIOS is using the dynamic tables framework that ARM contributed to EDK2. And 
trying to see if we can make that work for taking. So currently that is based on, I don't remember exactly with which file format they use to describe the input, but uh, that should obviously be based on the DT that uh, QMU passes. And then use there the existing code that we have, and it's about to go. So it's on a, it's like a staging branch in EDK2. It's about to go in uh, to use that. Uh, uh, Radek is looking into that. So uh, <coughs> I talked to Evan Lloyd last week, who is kind of owns that from the ARM side, and he explained how it all works at a other conference. And so now we're kind of getting people to look into it and uh, see. So it should, he, the way he explains it, it should cover all the cases that we are after, but uh, it needs some time to. Uh, I, I saw that uh, the rust and the rust Ah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuwe is, uh, you work collaborating with Fuwe yeah, yeah. to get this all. So one of the use cases for this machine is to be able to prototype the ROS interactions in the firmware. So that's why these guys are collaborating on it. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, Fuwe is working on this platform. So with a, the trust zone and ATF, you normally have the BL1 code in ROM, and you also have to have a uh, secure RAM. Uh, that's not what you guys talked about. You guys talked about them coming from flash stuff. You guys going to try to make it closer to trust zone compliant or, or not, or what's the plan for that? I don't think trust zone mandates secure RAM. Uh, Actually, I thought it did. Yeah. Secure SRAM, you said, right? Yeah, on chip, S secure SRAM on okay. chip. There's something that, and then typically BL1 is in a different place than the rest of the BLs that get loaded from Flash. Uh, basically, in server, we basically EL3, EL2, and uh, even we see EL3 is a chest zone, but we don't use uh, secure RAM, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's still the same. Unless you have EL3, uh, SEL3, uh, this type of things. Yeah, so basically we don't need uh, secure RAM. Well, we do have secure RAM. Right. We just don't have, I thought you needed SRAM, but. No, no, just S, but uh, yeah, you secure we, RAM to do this. We have secure RAM in this machine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you do, okay. Certainly, Quemi supports having this kind of thing and having flash devices that are only in the secure world and RAM that's only in the secure world. So it's just a matter of. What do you need? What does the hardware look like that we're trying to produce a representative model of and implementing that? So. Don't we? I would have thought that was kind of the point. It's like if the, if the real hardware does this, then we should do this, right? Yeah. <coughs> Well, I'm still confused if we're talking about just any kind of secure RAM, right? No, I'm basically talking about the trust zone, you know, something that's not external to the, to the SOC. You know, it's, it's a RAM that's, that's secure own access only, only secure only to touch it. But there, there are two different things. So having off-chip RAM or having secure RAM are two different things. Yeah. 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 So we, I don't think we use SRAM like separate. Uh, RAM regions and all, and I don't think for the prototyping that uh, it's necessarily very useful to have, but we do have a like, secure uh, RAM that is accessible to the secure world only, because yeah, that's okay. basically that's where your EL3 code lives. Right. Uh, okay, so I, I missed that, but I didn't okay. see that. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, Peter and uh, they are here. Uh, so do you like uh, to discuss how many DT3, uh, DT nodes uh, we want? So, so well, we need CPU and memory, right? Yes. So, um, in my opinion, we have three kinds of DT nodes. Uh, 
one uh, uh, memory and CPU number, they are flexible to the command line. Uh, we need this, we are agree. And the number two, uh, there are some DT nodes in, uh, currently in world and the UEFI still relies on these DT nodes. If we re re remove this, uh, we have to rework the UEFI to not depend on this. So do you, do which one? Uh, I have, uh, I have chance, uh, ch checked. I, I, we really have such kind of directory. Maybe, uh, maybe a f a f a five or six. Uh, uh, also, we really have. I, I checked. I can't give, give you the name, but we really have. So if we re remove this, we have to we have uh, some rework for, uh, in the uh, UEFI. So, do we like to do this? My impression is that that's kind of what you want to do. So the only thing you're trying to do here is there's a few bits in this thing which are configurable by the user, like the CPU, number of CPUs and the amount of RAM. And you kind of want to tell your lowest level firmware about that. So you've got to do it somehow, and you could do it via a DT, or you could do it via some custom device or whatever. But you only need to do that, and for everything else, it should be like the real hardware. On the real hardware, typically, you know exactly where your UART is, you know what your interrupt controller is, you know all this stuff, and you and UEFI or whatever is just hard coding that. So my assumption is that that's what the UEFI for this machine should also do. So yeah, which implies that you don't pass on the DT. You just you'll be so we shouldn't do DT in the first place, right? But, yeah, so well, that was kind of my initial. It's. You could do this, there's, there's like half a dozen different ways that you can provide the like the three pieces of information you need to the lowest level firmware. And I don't really care whether you do that via a DT or not. Um, and DT makes sense, uh, because uh, uh, there's some HW DB stuff that our cluster firmware is adding, which is also DT based. We already have DT parsing code from the VERT platform in UEFI. So I think uh, for CPU memory it's quite the best choice. The only concern maybe with gig V3 that depends on the number of CPUs what the, like the distributors and everything. I would expect that you just don't don't have anything about the gig V3 in the device tree. Just have a device tree thing that just says number of CPUs, RAM, stop. Yes, basically. But is what the emu emulates in terms of gig V3 pieces also depends on the number of CPUs. Depends on what, um, well yeah, um, so yes but but that's the detail of the hardware we're providing. So the, the machine, the code, C code that creates the machine can just say, if you said I have four CPUs, then you, it's, it just passes through the number of CPUs when you're instantiating the hardware. Um, I would, yeah, don't include any of that. So, I mean, your current V2 pack set has a lot of code from the vert board that's got lots of nodes for the UART and all the rest of this, and just remove all of that. Basically, have, have absolutely nothing there that the UEFI does not absolutely require. Probably. So, one more question is this. If I uh, boot from the EFI around SCT, what will happen? In EFI SCT. Yeah. If you run them this way. Yeah. We will uh, no, see a lot. The open will pass, of course. The open will pass. Yeah, I would like to see if you run it and see what will happen. So, yeah, we should shooting is a not the underneath innovation, but the software above the UEFI interface looks like it's new hardware. That, that's all I want. Well, you kind of already have that with VERT, though, right? VERT can run UEFI and you can run all the. So, my understanding is the purpose of this board is to do the level below that so that you can have a vaguely representative UEFI implementation yeah, and trusted firmware implementation I, and so on. I want to be able to develop firmware. 
Yeah. So you need the lower level to be reasonably representative. Do you mind? Uh, is it is it necessary to uh, to send your comments uh, to the mailing list to let all the others know? Yes. Okay. Should not be limited within this room. Um, the other thing I would suggest is you had a sort of other remaining issues slide or something on there, yeah. where you sort of list a couple of things that are kind of not yet sorted. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Uh, I would suggest that you expand on those a bit and post those to the mailing list. Uh, that's the kind of thing that's useful to put in a cover letter for patch series because it's sort of some of those I didn't know about, and that kind of affects the code review comments. If I can, so there's a couple of things there that I can I can either go and look into, or I can tell you what your probable problem is. Uh, but if you don't mention them in the patch, then I can't tell you. Um, yes. Kind of for version three, if you can include some text about that, that would be great. Okay. So, so currently, I, I don't have uh, time to look into this. So, I, I just simply. Uh, but you can't get this code upstream until you've addressed these. So, if you don't have time to look at it, it's not going anywhere. Sorry. Um, so, no, it's got to be done the, at some point. These, these two commits not only block my uh, SBIC commit. Mm -hmm. The same, uh, the same issue happens to what? Right, but that's also useful because it's a bug report, right? So, but my my point is kind of. If you don't mention these on the mailing list, I know nothing about them. Um, and for instance, your do transaction failed hook is basically that commit enables whenever the guest pokes at an address that doesn't have a device in it, you actually get a uh, guest exception for uh, bus fault, basically. Previously, you didn't get that. So if, you're, if that commit is causing you a problem, then the problem is that your guest is trying to access something that's not there. So either we're missing a device that should be there, or the guest is literally buggy and trying to go somewhere it shouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, but so I know obviously, if your if code is falling over, there's a problem that we need to investigate. But if you can at least post about these things to the mailing list, then well, maybe I can have a look at them, right? So because um, so I know that was basically it. So basically, if you're posting a patch series and you've got some issues that you've not yet sorted out, or you'd like somebody else to provide you with some input in, then please do mention them in the cover letter. So, we finish. Yes. Yeah. Thank you.